What's up, Impact Loungers? Your boy BQ here. We are getting damn close to Impact's biggest event of the summer with Slammiversary Live July 7th from Dallas, Texas. I woke up to a really great article this morning with TV Insider about Rosemary Slammiversary, the creative side of her character and her loyalty to Impact Wrestling. I'm going to paste the link here in the comments so you can read it for yourself, but I'm also going to talk about it, talk about my thoughts, and give you a chance to write your thoughts in the comments. You can find the article in the description of this video or in the pinned comment. But if it's your first time here, hit subscribe before you go. And if it's not your first time, hit that thumbs up. Now for us longtime fans of Impact, or hell, even if you've only been following the company for three or four years, we see stars make these short runs with the company in order to get back in the spotlight a little and then bolt at the first opportunity. We've seen a few stars actually make a name for themselves in TNA, in Impact, and then move on as soon as the grass is greener. Now, you know, those stars shouldn't be totally faulted because there isn't anything wrong with starting off small and building towards what you want to ultimately achieve. And that's anything in life. But as fans, we do like to see a little bit of loyalty. Who are we to say that? I don't know, but that's what we enjoy as fans. Now, the article highlights a lot of what we know as viewers, and it's that the Impact product and the company provides a home for wrestlers and their creative minds to flourish. We've seen many stars foolishly think that they can take a creative storyline or a creative gimmick that thrives on Impact, take it somewhere else for an even larger effect. They think with that larger platform that it's just going to be even bigger. We've seen a lot of wrestlers get fooled assuming that they're going to achieve that same level of success in a larger company that it did with Impact or even ROH. I mean, remember how massive the Broken Universe was supposed to be in WWE? With TNA, it was creative gold, and in WWE, he was talking to a goldfish. Impact has allowed storylines and characters to build, whereas in you know, a company like that, they seem to rush everything they do. Rosemary comes off like a really smart gal. We've talked about getting her here on the channel for an interview, but um, I may re-engage that, but I'm probably pulling the plug on interviews here on the uh, channel here pretty soon. But I may, may still try to get her on. But she comes off really, really smart. And she knows that being an impact allows her to be fucking Rosemary. We've seen her character grow from dark to light. And maybe light's not a good word to describe. But we've seen the growth, the evolution of the character... Even to this point where it's using a little bit of humor, but it's still true to the Rosemary character. Actually, in this last uh, two weeks ago on Impact when she was kind of in a stairway and Taya came, like it was kind of a funnier angle, but I thought the humor got over really, really well. Now, in the article, she talks about Jimmy Jacobs and his knowledge on how things work with her both backstage and in the ring and, and his understanding of the Rosemary character. She mentions the similarities to Sue Young, where we got to give Impact props for finding a way to make these two coexist and not drastically changing the presentation of either one of them. I think when Sue first came aboard, it seemed like, whoa, what are we doing here? Does that mean Rosemary's gone or whatever? I mean, this is, we're talking, I don't know how long Sue Young's been around. It's been a good year, year and a half, and they've been able to make both of these characters work. She talks about being creatively fulfilled. That is more important to her than, you know, a large amount of money that she'll never spend. I would imagine Impact pays her well, and if you've seen the Demon Bunny booth at an indie show, you'll see that the line is damn near out the door. And she's definitely enjoying her share of success there. So if it's broke, don't fix it, right? You know, early in my Air Force career, I took a position in Florida, and it was something I was really, really excited about. And I really looked forward to the opportunity to live in Florida. But despite being 15 minutes from the beach, I didn't have the same level of enjoyment and fulfillment in my job because the qualities that made me a good leader at my previous duty station, I didn't have the opportunity to exercise that in my new location in Florida. So I kind of went from being a standout in point A to just kind of getting lost in the mix in point B. So I kind of can relate to what Rosemary is saying and what she may fear could be the case. Monsters Ball is coming our way this Sunday. Taya Valkyrie defending against Sue Young, Jessica Havoc, and of course, Rosemary. Expect to see creatively like you have never seen before.
but in the form of physicality with this match. You know these four ladies are going to do everything they can to deliver a holy shit match. And it could be, and it could very well be what we are talking about the next morning. Again, the link to the interview is in the comments. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this up upload. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this upload. And I'll talk to you soon.